Okay, transport of blood gases. Um, we're going to concentrate on oxygen for that transport, actually. And then there are going to be two. And of course, we're going to concentrate on hemoglobin, which is in our red blood cells, and the myoglobin, which is in our muscle cells. Okay, firstly, we'll concentrate on hemoglobin. Now, hemoglobin, while you're making these notes, a couple of things for you to concentrate on. The uh, red component will be the bit you identify with, with the red blood cells. And the fact that it carries oxygen will be something that you remember. And it's the carrier of oxygen because it has an affinity for it, which we'll come on to a little later. It also carries away the waste carbon dioxide from cells after respiration uh, when they go back up to the lungs. And that's where our previous lessons on gases exchange and uh, diffusion come in. Okay, when we're comparing myoglobin to haemoglobin, um, both have uh, contain iron, um, which is therefore helps them transport the oxygen. And what we're looking at with that store of oxygen in the muscle is that it can be used during exercise. And we all know that oxygen is used in aerobic respiration, so we can resynthesize ATP. And the interesting fact and thing to compare is that the affinity that haemoglobin and myoglobin have, it's actually myoglobin that has the higher affinity for it. So oxygen and its bond with myoglobin uh, is stronger because it has a higher affinity than it does for haemoglobin, hence why it enters the muscle cells uh, when required. All cells need oxygen. It is the essential fuel which is necessary to enable cells to stay alive and to carry out their various activities. Bringing oxygen to the cells requires the uptake of oxygen from the air in the lungs, its transportation in the blood, and its delivery to cells all over the body. The first step is the taking up of oxygen by blood flowing through fine capillaries in the walls of the lungs air sacs, or alveoli. The oxygen molecules change from their state as a gas freely circulating in the air, dissolving into a solution in the plasma within the capillaries of the alveoli. Once in the solution of the blood, 98% of this dissolved oxygen is taken up by passing red cells, leaving just 2% remaining in the physical solution unattached. Red cells are particularly well suited to transporting oxygen because they contain a special oxygen binding protein known as hemoglobin. Each molecule of hemoglobin itself contains four molecules of heme, an iron-containing pigment, which binds oxygen loosely and reversibly. Hemoglobin that is fully saturated with oxygen is bright red and is called oxyhemoglobin. On the other hand, hemoglobin that is not saturated with oxygen is purplish blue in color and is called deoxyhemoglobin. It is heme which makes it possible for the red cells to pick up oxygen dissolved in the blood, transport it combined with hemoglobin, and release it back into the blood as oxygen in solution, ready for delivery to the various cells of the body. Hemoglobin gives up its oxygen as red cells travel through capillaries in tissues where there is a low content or partial pressure of oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen represents the level of dissolved oxygen in plasma. As oxygen is released and again is carried in solution, the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillaries becomes greater than the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding tissues. This causes oxygen to move out of the capillaries into the tissues and to finally reach the cells. This graph, the oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin, shows why hemoglobin is particularly suited to its role in transporting oxygen. The oxygen dissociation curve demonstrates the relationship between the oxygen carried in combination with hemoglobin. The O2 saturation and the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. The sharp upstroke and the flat plateau illustrate how oxygen is released to the tissues over a wide range of conditions. Its shape means that although the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood returning from the lungs and being pumped out by the arteries may be reduced to only 50% of the normal value, say due to lung disease or high altitude, hemoglobin will still be 85% saturated with oxygen. Okay, so alongside that explanation you've just had, and the fact that we know that oxygen will bind to hemoglobin, 
We also need to know that even though this saturation curve exists, there must be a reason why it leaves haemoglobin, which has an affinity for, and uh, the oxygen goes to the myoglobin. And that happens because of two conditions we're going to concentrate on when we exercise, and that reduces the affinity, therefore its attractiveness. If carbon dioxide increases, that will increase the acidity of the blood. Now when we exercise, we aerobically respire, we produce more carbon dioxide because of respiration, that increases the acidity and that is one of the reasons why haemoglobin uh, is reduced, has a re reduced affinity with oxygen, therefore it will dissociate more readily. The second one is temperature and with increased temperature with the exercise in our working muscles that increase reduces the affinity of haemoglobin with oxygen therefore we re release more of it which then can be taken up by the myoglobin and that shift to the right of that curve is the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve with the Bohr shift and that Bohr shift, that shift to the right is created by carbon dioxide increasing the acidity and temperature increase so why is the Bohr shift so important this Bohr shift that is the question that's most often asked when you get given that diagram of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and then you're asked why there's a shift to the right that shift to the right is exactly what we're talking about and that is created by an increase in temperature and an increase in acidity which means that a reduction in the affinity of haemoglobin for oxygen occurs therefore it dissociates more readily and then it can go to the myoglobin and the exam question I've chosen explain how oxygen is taken up by haemoglobin from the lungs and released at the muscle site so we've got taken up and then we've got release. So we've got two parts we might want to talk about. And the reason I picked this question is it's linked to our gaseous exchange that we've done before in diffusion. So note the high partial pressure at the lungs to low partial pressure. So the gas wants to go across the semi-permeable membrane that we've spoken about before. And that's from a high area of high pressure, partial pressure to low partial pressure. And that again happens where we have a low partial pressure at the muscles in the blood and a high partial pressure of oxygen, so it wants to go from the area of high to low. Other marks for the question also talk about that dissociation, which um, isn't mentioned in terms of the curve in this question, but the dissociation gets your mark, and then we have to mention that myoglobin and that affinity that it has. So a slightly different question, explain how oxygen is taken up by haemoglobin from the lungs and released at the muscle site, and for three marks, I think we could answer that. Um, this would run maybe alongside our oxygen dissociation curve and why it shifts to the right.